Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon, good evening. Everyone on planet Earth. This is the remembering. Um, today's show is going to be a little bit disrupted, having a little technical difficulties to start off with. I may have to cut it short, but for now, what I'm going to try and do is pull in Darius. Are you, are you there at all? Yeah, can you hear me? All right, yeah, beautiful. How's the line? Uh, the, uh, the line's good. Oh, no. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to quickly discuss about um, next show. Darius, I'm having um, a friend of mine, Bob, on the show. He's had some pretty intense experiences with um, being taken aboard craft from specific uh, races of other beings and there's some, a, lot, a lot of things to share actually from his experiences. Also, um, certain things discussing how they they do take specific people from specific families and and then they do keep it in the bloodline. Very, very interesting stuff. But while I, while I have you um, with me, did you get to check out what I Put on your wallet all this morning. Uh, no. What 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 did you put on there? Oh, it reminded me of yourself. It was this uh, younger guy in the school class, and um, the te- he was having a go at the teacher for just putting out documents without even explaining them. Like she was just a, a drone sort of thing, not even getting up and explaining what what the class was about, and and getting kids enticed and interested. He was just. Um, yeah, made some really good points to remind me of, of yourself and explaining your experiences in the last in the last few weeks and what you discussed on the show. It was, yeah, it was really really good. Yeah. All right. Well, a question on me, Leo. What the, what's the story that you have so far with the ship? Because I was really interested in the experience that Bob had with the ship you were telling me about. Um. Well, I've only he's only briefed me on that a little bit because where we was the catch up. Where we were, there was other people, and he kind of doesn't necessarily speak about these sort of things in front of specific people. But um, he was taken, from my understanding, I'm pretty sure, um, not against his will, if I'm correct. And they were doing specific things on him, and one of the things was that they, if I'm correct, me if I'm wrong, but he'll explain in more detail next week. Everything that I'm saying is correct, but they, um, I'm not quite sure which race, but he would explain all that. But they put something up up through his nose, through the cavity, and up through went up through the back of his um, skull behind where his ear is. And after he had that experience, and he'll explain a lot more in detail what happened. But he went to the, the doctors. He was complaining about the pain or something on the inside. Of where, where we had this, and this was a, it was a physical experience. It wasn't um, a dream state. And they put it. They ended up putting the surgeons ended up putting a camera um, up, up his nose when he was, I think he was out of it, and up where the same place where he was explaining, and there was all scratch marks behind his ear, like something had been in there scratching on the inside of the cavity where um, under his where his ear was, and the doctors were sort of blown away, but he didn't explain. What happened to him? But the doctor was blown away, questioning how how this guy got all these scratch marks on the inside of his brain, pretty much. So that was sort of com- double con- confirmed for him um, what happened, really. So yeah, it's pretty, pretty very interesting. But there's a lot of things he hasn't told me, which is we're going to discuss on the show. So yeah, it's going to be pretty interesting. So you'll be able to ask him all sorts of questions. Yeah, yeah, I was I was sort of waiting because I, I wanted to ask some questions, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, uh, there there there's a lot of stuff going on on my end too. Instead of me actually, I find instead instead of me actually telling people to try to like wake them up, they're yeah. actually you know giving me information now. It's it's kind of weird because uh, just today I went up to Frank and France uh, Slocum and we we're yeah. taking a hike. And uh, there there was water coming out, and I seen these kids pumping water, and the one father was helping pump water too. 
and uh, they were having well water and everything, and they're filling up, and so they didn't have to pay for it. And then I, the, I walked over because I had a water bottle with me, but it was empty. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna get some water. And they're like, I'm, I'm like, yeah, it's, it's better this way. It's free. And he's like, yeah, I know. With all the stuff that they put in uh, the water and everything, he, the, he, he was telling me this. He was like, with all the chemicals they put in the water, the fluoride, the chlorine, that uh, toxifies your body and messes with your, uh, your brain chemicals, and the GMOs that they put inside food and stuff. I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> someone's telling me something now finally instead of me telling them what's really going on they're actually people are starting to actually question things oh that's, wow that's, that's really um i think i'm just looking in the chat at the moment and they're saying it's fuzzy i mean i'm just gonna quickly if anyone can hear me at the moment how how's the call at present because it's it sounds clear. It's been clear through me and you, but if they're saying that it's um, it happened last week, like it sounded pretty clear last week, and I listened to the recording, and it was all choppy. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It, 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 it sounded it sounded really good last week. The show, like when we were talking, but when I went on the recording, I was like, oh my god, I I, I couldn't even hear myself. Like I would talk, and like it would be like it would jumble and jumble. It, it, you couldn't even hear anything. Hmm. Oh, we've got one of them typing now. I spoke to you, actually, I haven't been in touch with yourself, but I had a meeting last week um, with a chap who's retired now, but he used to work in the Secret Services. And I'm trying to I'm, I'm trying to see if he can hop on the show. Is, have you heard of uh, John Searle at all? Have you heard of John Searle? Uh, no, I'm, I'm not sure of a John Searle. Yeah, you have to check him out on YouTube. John Sell is in his 80s now, but he, in the 50s, he was, um, or he says, I won't go because they've asked me not to go on with this, so with what they told him, but he explains that he had dreams of um, certain technologies, and when he came out of his dreams, dream state, the technology that he had when he woke up, he was able to build f this specific um, free energy device, which it created also it created negative ions, which um, healed most parts of the body with disease and ailments and all that sort of thing, as well as um, creating an anti anti gravity anti gravity device, which actually in the first few tests actually um, grew that much speed that it shot through the roof. There's actually there's a really good um doc, there's a few good documentaries on um, YouTube about him, but anyway he ended up getting infiltrated and bombarded and they pretty much sort of destroyed his reputation now and he's kind of living in a really bad way in, over in London. But um, well, yeah. there, there, there's this really good experience I had today too. Uh, I was over at my uncle Bob's I think it was yesterday and we we're watching this one magician. And he was doing tricks in front of the audience. It's sort of like Chris Angels, but he was a different guy. I forget his name. But uh, he was doing tricks in front of the in front of people in public. And he he himself was offended. It, it wasn't tricks. The reason why he said it was a trick because you we, we need to understand that we create our realities. But if other people could influence their reality over us, so if you if you go to somebody and if you want to show them something amazing. If you go to them, and uh, my Uncle Bob explained this to me more. He explained it to me after one, uh, we were done watching it. Yeah. If you try to do something to someone, like say, say if it's like uh, do a mech trick or a car trick, right? Mm -hmm. And you're actually telling them, you say, okay, well, I'm going to show you magic, and I'm going to show you the power of your mind, and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. They're already going to think off the bat, okay, th th this isn't going to work. But mm -hmm. if you come to them and you say this is a trick, then they're going to be like, okay, it's a trick, so it must work. And they're influen they're influencing reality. So they're going to co-create with you, and then the trick is going to come to life. And after one, we watched that today at school. I had a deck of cards with me. And uh, what I did was I laid out the deck of cards, and my, the, my Uncle Bob showed me this, and I, I, I just wanted to see if it would work because I had a group of people, or like five people at the table at the time. And I walked over out of nowhere, and I said, okay, do you guys want to see a trick? And they're like, yeah, sure. <laughs> and already, already in their minds, I already knew, okay, because 
they think it's a trick, so this is going to work. I know it's going to work. How the game is, how the trick actually is, is you have the audience pick one card and they have to agree on it. And for this game, everybody agreed on the seven of diamonds. And out of the deck, you spread them all across the desk, all all across the table, right? And then you and then and then you tell them to imagine the card in their head, the seven of diamonds in their head. And you tell them to feel the card and see if it's more on the left side or on the right side. And then we did this game, this this trick because you you, you want to pinch on their minds that it's a trick so they can believe that anything's possible. So. As I put that belief in there, as if this was a trick, they said, okay, I feel it more on the left side, and so I eliminated the right side. And I said, okay, I took the left side and I made it into a deck, and I split it apart, and I said, is it more on the top or on the bottom of the deck? And they said, oh, I feel it on the bottom a little bit. And I said, remember, this is a trick, so just keep the card in your head and feel, you know, use your intuition. Yeah. And they said, okay, it's more on the bottom, so I eliminated the top deck. And then <laughs> we got to the final four cards, right, the final four cards of doing this out of 52 cards out of the deck. So we got down to the final four cards, and I said, okay. Now, remember, this is a trick. You know, I practice this trick all the time, when in reality, I never practice this trick in front of anybody ever. So I was just trying to get them to believe that this is possible. It's going to happen. And they started to believe it, and then I'm like, okay, now pick a card which you think is the right card. Yeah. And they're like, okay, let's pick. It was uh, it was right next to the middle one, but it was on the right hand side. And they're like, okay, yeah, this one, this one, yeah, I feel it here, I feel it here. I'm like, okay, I had no clue what was gonna happen because I never tried this in front of an audience. I thought it was gonna be a red card, but since they influenced the reality, they created the reality. When we flipped over the card, the first card that they picked was the seven of diamonds, and everybody was like. What the eyes were open wide and everything, and they're like, "Oh my god!" You no, know? and then afterwards, after when the trick was done, I said, "Okay, I'm gonna tell you something. That wasn't a trick. I had no, I did nothing to the cards. This was all you. The reason why this happened is because you guys believed it was possible. And right now, what you guys are feeling, the um, the awe moment, the amazement. You know, if you could keep that feeling inside of you, you would understand that everything's possible. Anything's possible. It's just the reason why we live our lives the way we do." And the reason why we cannot do anything that we want to do, like levitate or anything else, is because we believe it's not possible. Mm -hmm. But if you believe that it is possible and you believe that it's a trick or something, you know, it's just a trick, your mind will start to believe that, okay, it's a trick, it must be possible, and you start to believe that it is possible. <laughs> and thus you're able to do what, you know, thus you're able to do what you think that you can't. And I demonstrated that with a card trick, and I told them, you could do anything you want. This wasn't a trick. I had no clue this was going to happen. You guys did this. I didn't do it. You guys did it because you guys influenced the reality to make it come true. Isn't you know, that's pretty cool. Yeah, my well, gosh, that, that, that's amazing. Definitely amazing. This is a like, conundrum in itself when you're speaking about how when you believe that it's a trick, and then you can believe that it wasn't a trick, but it's your actual belief that's making it real. That's That's... Yeah. And then uh, the, 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 another thing, okay, so like at, at this point, when when I showed them the trick, I was in awe because I'm like, oh, shit, it really worked. And like, oh, my God, it really worked, really worked. You know? <laughs> and, like, I was, I, I was really happy, so I'm like, okay, let's try this again. Yeah. And when I was done explaining it to them that it wasn't a trick, that I it was actually all them using their psyche ability, yeah. then I'm like, okay, I guarantee right now, since you guys know that it's a trick anymore, this trick isn't going to happen again. Because now you guys be, now that you guys believe that it's not a trick anymore, thus you know it, it, it's it's random. So now yeah. I can't believe it anymore. So yeah. after when I told them that, okay, we're gonna try this again, and this time I let everybody grab two cards of their own. Okay. Okay, so instead of picking one card, I had them pick two cards out of the deck, and we tried it all over again. And this time was a four of spades, and we didn't get any fours at all, nothing because. <laughs> They didn't believe it was a trick anymore. So they <laughs> reality to make it believe that it wasn't going to come true. But I guarantee, if I didn't tell them that, if I didn't tell them that it wasn't a trick, and I still had them believe that it was a trick, and I practice this all the time, yeah, they would do it all over. You know. Wow. That's... This this is what we have to start to. I mean, the best way to awaken somebody is basically to is seeing is believing. So when you show somebody a trick. They're actually bending reality, and you show them a trick, and it actually amazes them. And you say, "Okay, it wasn't a trick. This was your psyche ability doing this." And let me explain how you how you did it. Then they're gonna start to practice. They're gonna be like, "Oh my God, I could actually do this. I could actually 
you know, use my intuition and everything that I knew is always inside of me, you know? Mm. But, um, that, that, that's that, all I got. <laughs> <laughs> that's unreal. That, that, that's, that's like living proof. You know what I mean? That, that, um, it's sort of proving to them that it's their, their belief in that, that's actually possible because it is a trick. You know what I mean? It's, that's unreal. It kind of, um, Leads me to this thought that I sort of came to a little a little while ago when it comes to densities or dimensions, whichever you want to call it. Um, and you know, I'm not sure if you're aware that that Japanese, I think it was Japanese or Chinese that done the water crystals was freezing the molecules with the names of the words on the on the glass. Yeah. Did you know about that guy? Uh no, I, I I'm not actually sure what, okay. what that is. I'll have to send it to you. But pretty much, basically, what it was, he he had two glasses of, or has he done a few glasses, but two glasses of water and same water. But what he what he did was he froze them. But before he froze them, he wrote he wrote on the glass with paper thing on the glass um like love. And then on the other glass. Oh, wrote, oh yeah, I, yeah, I, I I know what you're talking about. When, when you write love on it. Yeah. Uh, the, Something with the water, the crystal or something inside of there, it turns into like a bright, beautiful snowflake. Snowflake. But if you write fear or hatred on there, anything with fear and hatred, it'll turn into this dark and like ugly thing. Yeah. I, I don't know how to explain it, but I I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, the that, geometric that, 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 that's how, and that sort of thing. Oh, that 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 that's actually people could heal themselves if they wanted to. They could just because. Water is very, like, most of our body is made out of water. So if you write that stuff on water bottle and let it harmonize uh, with it and you drink it, you're putting in that energy inside your body. Thus, it's going to create a love frequency with inside of you. Then all diseases should go away, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you're sick. Exactly. The power, you know I mean? of the because the power of tent is very, very powerful. Yeah. And that, that, that's why uh, I, I don't know if you ever heard of monks levitating before or anything like that. Yeah, yeah, I've been I've gone yeah, into that. Yeah, they're, 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 the reason why they're able to do this is because monks live on the mountains. So monks always live on mountains and stuff. The reason why they live on the mountains, the high mountains, the really, the really intelligent ones that are really spiritual, they live on the mountains, is because so the density of of humanity doesn't mess with their energies up there because the, the the energy field won't influence up there. So they're able to basically synchronize with their own energy and able to play and have fun, you know, actually create what they're here to create their gods. They're able to create, they're able to levitate because they're not influenced with all this negative energy down here. That's, That's why they dense. go up mountains. So, yeah, yeah. So well, they go up on the mountain, so it's not dense energy. It's actually more free energy because it's their energy, what they're projecting, not influenced by other people's energy. Well, you know what? That's very funny that you say that. Um, from what I was going to go into after that water crystals, that's that's pretty, that's unbelievable. I've actually never thought about when it comes. I've thought of the energy principles, but with them, them being in the mountains, away from the rest of society and civilization, where it would be different, much more light compared to the dense yeah. of. The, the physical where there's lots of people li- sort of living together in the negative mindsets they might portray. Um, but yeah, that, that's um, unreal. What I was going to tie that into is I thought that I had a little while ago, um, as well as that, that water crystal ex- experiment, how the intention actually sort of creates um, with, with your with your intent. So if that's, if that's been proven if that's the case so we can we actually, it's like a form of manipulating the physical reality of 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 what we're doing pretty much if you know what i mean yeah 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 i know, I know what you mean yeah so if we if and that's a really small scale but then you can look at it like um sort of things like the law of attraction when you project and you believe and you manifest things in your life that you know 100% are going to happen and you actually do you do create them and they do actually unfold and they do happen and everything sort of works out exactly how you intend them to work out um, that goes hand in hand with that work so it's like with the intent of that work creating that physical 
a physical form sort of proves that it, it is it's a real sort of occurrence that's happened. Um, so if that's if that's what's happening in this density, and we're going a little bit like I have a not not the best understanding, but a good understanding of how dimensions and that sort of thing work. I'm always trying to find the deeper sort of rabbit hole to understand how far it really goes. Speaking of, speaking of dimensions, yeah. the, today we're, we're we're still in because I was hiking today, and we're in the woods. And uh, it's, it was speaking of vibration, like it, like today we actually, well, it, it looked like it. I, I believe that it was. When we were looking out at the grass, there was like a lot of leaves popping up in grass. It looked like when you looked out, into all this grass that it was all blurry and like it looked like it was actually vibrating at a certain frequency it, it, it was really cool it's something that you have to see to understand what i'm talking about but yeah. when you look at, the, at all the at all the flowers and all the grass that was growing it looked like it was really really blurry and all the contrast and everything else it looked like it was blurry and and, and if you stared at it long enough like it was actually vibrating and then wow. when you looked off into the everything was perfect it, it was all still and then you looked into that one spot, and it looked like everything was vibrating. The reason why I believe that is is because well, plants and trees vibrating. actually sing to each other. The, yeah. the plants and uh, communicate with each other by by uh, sound, by uh, songs that they play. Yeah. And the, the, this was actually showing, and I forget the video, what it was, but I remember when I was watching a video, and this one lady or guy had uh, some kind of electric, tubes going into the plant or something uh -huh. and she had a hook up to a radio yeah. and every so often the the plant would start making like songs like, like sounds that really? sounded really beautiful yeah and yeah i i, I had a, it's it's on my facebook post probably 2011 i posted that up I, you would have to go through all the other ones but if, if i could find it i'll definitely share it uh on Skype with uh, the next show that we have because it'll take me forever if I try to look for it today. Yeah, yeah, no, but, uh, wow, that's unreal. Wow. Yeah, yeah the, the, the plant, the plant, out of the speaker, the plant was actually making sounds like, and, and, and it sounded like, it sounded like those meditation songs that you would listen to that would put you like in a meditative state. But like it was actually making really, really beautiful sound, sound wave patterns. I'm definitely this, for this. This is what your... I believe. Yeah. The, 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 this is what I believe that how trees and plants communicate because everything is one, everything is energy, everything yeah. is living. Mm -hmm. So I believe they communicate with not a sound that we can hear because we're not in that dimensional frequency yet. We're not in that higher vibration yet. Yeah. But they they communicate in the higher realm, spiritual realm. And that's what I believe what I'll see in today when I looked out and all the and all the flowers and stuff, it looked it was blurry because they were vibrating. They were probably singing. That's what I believe I see in today. And it, it was really cool. It's something that you would have to see to actually experience a full experience. Well that's amazing. Have you heard of that um this experiment where they went to I think they were work working on like the consciousness of plants compared to animals and that sort of thing and they they had um, a certain plant that was connected up to some um, electronic machine that read frequency and, and that sort of thing. And what they did was they done experiments where they would go to pretend to chop the plant. Oh, we've got a massive echo. Can you hear that echo? There's a bit of an echo there. I think it's gone now. It went with it to with chop the plant, but, but not actually chop it down but just to pretend to go and cut it and the electronic frequency reader would it wouldn't show anything but before they went to cut the plant like actually went to cut with the intent to kill it the um the frequency reader that was connected to that plant went off the went off the scale like it was buzzing like it knew it was about to die oh, yeah i i seen this i I seen this I, I don't know if it's the same video but a guy was uh put a fire next to a plant and they they have like these I, the, the, I don't know what to call them but these tubes that connect to the nervous system of the plant or something yeah. and they they were measuring the basically me measuring it uh and when you put a fire next to it the i guess i don't I don't know what you would call it heart or something of the plant and basically rit it, it rises wow. when the flame was close and went 
but the way it went back to it, it's probably the same thing you're talking about, but I don't have to explain it because I, I, did, I didn't do the research fully on it. But, yeah, yeah, that's amazing. Is it, are you driving at the moment? Can you hear like a wind sort of a sound? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I'm actually just dropping someone off right now. Oh, cool. But, um, uh, I, 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 I could mute myself. Uh, I'll, I'll be back in I'll be back in five. If that's okay with you. Yeah, yeah, no worries. It's totally up to you. You there? Okay. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll be right back in five. Okay, I'll see you soon. All right, everybody. What I was going to discuss a little a theory that sprung into my mind a little while ago was the thought when I was explaining about how the water crystals and how having the the positive intent created the perfect crystals and manifesting in your own life with how you want things to come and come to you and, and create sort of um, resonated with an explanation that come to me a little while ago about speaking of, of densities and dimensions where I think it's the fourth or an overtone of the fourth or the fifth density or dimension. And, of course, if this is how it all works. But from my understanding, it's more energy and a lot less um, dense physical form like it is here in this in this third, third density. So if if the fourth or the fourth or the fifth is more energy and in that state, in that plane, if we'll say we'll call it, is a lot less dense and more energy and everything that you want to create is easily created. Like I've heard theories where how they brought the pyramids or certain pyramids of Giza through resonating the actual physical object from one density and bringing it through to this density instead of them actually physically building the the pyramid itself in this dimension and resonated it through the dimensions into this one. It's pretty far out there um, theory, but if you come to research all different things, it's everything sort of links up to each other and the rabbit hole goes deep and more things seem and become more possible. But if I'm back on the back. Okay, I'm just ex- I was just going through an um explanation. I'll quickly start again so you got a little insight. But what I was explaining is how if you know we're talking about the water crystals, how everything that we manif like everything we want to manifest we can bring to us, like we co create and that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's that, it's that, yeah. Everything that we want, we we really can manifest. Yeah. Like, I don't, I, I don't know, but I'm like, I for the past couple of days, I've been feeling like I'm capable of, like, I, the, I know that I'm capable of doing anything, mm-hmm. but I'm trying to get more. Uh, how should I explain it? I'm trying. I'm starting to get more like inspiration that I could, that like you know, just that uh-huh. knowing that could, or I already could. It's just like. I'll just uh, the, the, even that one card trick that I show people like when, when you start practicing, I, I promise everybody if you start practicing your, your instinctive truth, your your technology that's already inside of you, stop using the five percent of the brain and start unlocking the four hundred. You know, start 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 going into your meditation state, and not, I, I'm not talking about meditate, go into that strict meditation. You know. Uh, you have to see a blue light. Then when you see a blue light, you'll see a green light and then go into the trance. No, me- meditating is just being relaxed. You can meditate by walking in nature. Oh, That's yeah, meditation. people meditate in church when they fall asleep. <laughs> exactly. For instance, when you're watching TV, you're meditating there. Yeah. You're, you are completely relaxed. But, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't I really call it meditation to unlock your uh, your your true powers that are inside of you. <laughs> Because you're, you're watching TV and you're getting brainwashed, but <laughs> when you go out, just relax. You know, put on music, relax, and actually pretend. Be creative, you know, yeah. and like look, look, no, look at look the leaves on the ground and put on some music, relax. You know, be in a state and imagine the leaves coming up in the air and floating near you. And sometimes, if if you're really in that state, you'll get the leaves move with you. And mm. 
I the, the, usually I this is when I when I take a walk out into nature. I put on music and like I just basically let my arms go, flow with energy, and like I look at uh, loose leaves on a tree and like I imagine it flowing on, and then some of them will just fall off and flow in the air where my hand's going. Yeah. It's just you have to start practicing your true your your, your true essence, your your powers that you always had, the the knowing, the truth, everything that you everything that you can think of right now. Everything, whether if it's levitation or teleportation, everything that you think of in your head, everything that's inside of you that you could think of, you can do it. It's all possible, Every, because definitely. If, because, because if you couldn't do it, then you would never think of it. Yeah. It would never come to your mind if you couldn't do it. So everything that you think of, whether if it's you know teleportation, levitation, uh, moving thing, tele- telekinesis, you could do that because you thought of it. Because yeah. you are a creator God. So when you think of something, you just manifested it. Not in this reality exactly, but manifested it in a spiritual realm. And yeah. that's what we're moving back into. We're moving back into the higher dimension. That's what we're in now. We're, I, I wouldn't say we're moving into it. We're already there. It's just we have to start practicing what we already know, but we've forgotten. We, we just have to start practicing what's already inside of us. Everything that we could think of is something that we could do. It's yeah. just a matter of fact of actually getting up and trying it and not waiting for somebody else to do it for us. Is to say, okay, it's ready. You're, you're, you could do it now because because I do it. I did it, so it's okay to do it. And that's what I find a lot of people are doing. They're waiting for somebody else to give them oh, it's the okay to do it. Yeah. You know, They're waiting for the okay. So they're waiting to uh, – they're waiting for someone else to do it for them and say, okay, well, it's time to do it now because I did it, so you could do it too. Yeah. You know, you inspire yourself, you know, inspire yourself to inspire others to exactly. do it. That's well, the only way that you're going to become in the now if you're actually doing it. You know, you can't wait. It's like, it's like, you could now. pray for rain. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, 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 you could pray for rain. This was a saying I got off somebody. Uh, I forget who I got it off of, but you could pray for rain. But the rain may not come, but don't be afraid to water your own plant to make it grow. Yeah. Because if you're trying to grow your plant, you could pray for rain all you want, okay? But if it does come, get up and water the plant. Do work, you know? Yeah. Do what you already know. It's not that hard. It's just we're waiting for something, and we need to stop waiting, and we need to start doing. And when we start doing, the world will change significantly. It will change, like, really, really fast. Like, as the world well as- is going to change. As well as everyone getting together as well and people losing that, that fear of the worry of a stranger, you know what I mean? We're all, we're, we actually are all one when you want to talk about that sort of thing. But the disconnection is one of the biggest problems that we have with one another, and especially people being racist and biased against sex and that sort of stuff. It's crazy. But it's, in my understanding, if it's true and... It could be the iconic mind, you know what I mean? We go into archons and the history and all that sort of stuff, but we won't. But it's a mindset that's been going for a really long time and a lot of people are still trying to hold that together. It's a um, very, very special time that we're living in. But I'm going to quickly dive back to what we are talking about um, and how talking about densities. And like I said, the same understanding that maybe I don't mention density was an actual place, another place that you go. But if you're speaking then, it's here right now. It's us being having an ability to resonate with the abilities that are possible and then we do move into higher states, whether it's consciousness or frequency or vibration and that sort of thing. But what I was discussing about earlier when you were off for that five minutes, um, what was explained to me a little while ago was that if the if, if it's I don't know if it's the fourth or fifth dimension or the overturn of a dimension or one or the other, um, they're saying that it's a lot more energy and a lot less physical dense um, physicality if you want to call that over in if we if we hypothetically we'll just call it place for now. And it's kinda of like the opposite here in this third dimension where it's a lot of physical and very small energy, if you know what I mean, Darius? Yeah. So if it kinda if you look at it in this way, it kinda goes hand in hand. If if it is true and over there in the realms of the higher densities, if you are it's mostly energy and where they are they can manifest things like 
like a drop of a hat, like read books and heard different things from different people, where they can manifest almost straight away things that they believe in their mind or things that they can do. And also because there's a lot more energy there and it's a lot less dense, um, it's the opposite of here, then it's much more easier to create and to do anything they want. So if it's all, if we're all within that same, like the one small bandwidth here at the moment, if that's if that's the case of how it all works, and yeah, it kind of puts a flip to well, we actually do the same thing here in this third density, say we call it, where we do actually do the same things. Like we do manifest things, we do um, create stuff through belief, and people do levitate. It's been proven, and all these unbelievable things. So it's actually the same thing, these higher densities or overtones of densities where they're doing the same, but there's more energy there. Here it's more dense, so it's the same thing, yeah. but it's more dense here, if you know what I mean. Yeah, the, the reason why it is so dense, and I, I'm going to go back to my one magic trick because it's going it, to, you, you'll see why, what, the way I'm going to go with this story. Uh, the reason why it's so dense here is because people, the people, People know the right way, but they're afraid to express it, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So what, what, what people influence the, the, to say, okay, it, it's not possible, it's not going to become possible. And with the car trick that I did, there there had to be, there was one, two, there was about five people there, okay? So with the car trick, the, with the seven of diamonds, there are about five people there. And if you could get five people to believe that something's possible, it will manifest in your reality just with the car trick. Five people believed that, okay, it's a trick, it's possible, it's going to work. And it did work because five people believed it. Now, could you imagine if 100 people believed that we gravitate? Just 100 people could believe, not in a circle, and believe that they can meditate, that, that they gravitate. They would be levitating in the sky. And when they're levitating in the sky, okay, 100 people will come over, and they'd be like, okay, they're doing it, so I could do it. And then everybody would do, be doing it because the five people could believe that a magic trick would a, a card could be possible when it, it wasn't a trick it, it, it was just manifesting reality if they could believe that that is true and you just say a trick and you know just basically put put in different wording to mess with their mind they can believe if five people could believe that a trick could work that they can manifest their own, their own reality imagine when a hundred people get together or even oh. a thousand people get together oh, and, they, and they manifest you know well, do you know what? That's a, good, a really good thing. If any, everyone who's listening at the moment who will listen to the recording later on, if this is actually still clear, hopefully it's still clear and it's not chopping out, but if everyone does maybe a really small example of that card trick, like something simple where you can say five people or so, Darius, we can let them, give them something where they believe that it's real, not knowing yourself if it will actually happen, and seeing what happens from that demonstration, if you know what I mean. Uh, could, 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 could you read the question again? I'm sorry. No, you're right. Like, say, for example, your card trick, where you weren't sure 100%, well, in a way you did because you believed as well, but having everyone around viewing, but manifesting on the idea that a trick is possible, and actually making it like the trick worked out exactly how you formulated it to be because they believed in it, if you know what I mean. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So if, it, it, the the more people you get to do that, it's it's going to happen faster. You know, the, the the more people you get to believe that something's possible, it's going to happen faster than just one person doing it because we do understand we are all one. Everything's energy. Yeah. It goes back to the beginning. Like so when you were all telling the teacher how <laughs> who's telling you about the desk at the bounce the desk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, 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 how the how the teacher was trying to tell me that everything's separate, and I said, I, that, and I said, no, everything's separate. Everything's one. Uh, yeah, that that was pretty funny. But I, uh, but what, when people start to believe that that everything's possible, and more people influence and focus on one thing, then that thing is going to come to reality because we are all one. But if one person focuses on it, you'll find that uh, you could do it, but it's not going to be as quick as if you had the whole world by your hand, you know? Uh, yeah, just you, can you imagine you. if we were all come to that same, or maybe even a, a tiny percent come to that same similar understanding where 
everyone's got rid of the whole idea of separateness. Is that even a word, separateness? I don't know where I pulled that from. But where <laughs> was that idea of being separated where we're, we actually are all the set, we're all one and we can all actually work together and manifest anything that we achieve as possible and it doesn't matter whether it's here in front of us or whether it's something etherical. Um, it's a very, very sort of profound thought. But yeah, what I was saying for everyone who's listening and listen to it later on, doing tiny little examples of that card trick, not specifically with cards, but say if you were to perform a demonstration where you weren't sure of the outcome, but you use the same principles of where you put something out there for the audience you're working with that no 100% that it's possible. And all they're going to do is put their intent into it and then see if the outcome actually does work through you being able to see that they're putting their intent into it and actually manifesting it, if you know what I mean. Not the country. Yeah, see, the, 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 what I showed people right now is because, you know, I, I've been trying to get that, you know, them to crack a little bit, and I'm finding that when you show them a trick and you say it's just a trick, and then you show them it, and at the end of it, when it's done, they're like, oh, my God, and then you tell them it wasn't a trick. <laughs> it, 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 was, it wasn't a trick. It was actually magic, as you don't believe that it was. And then they start to, they're like, they're, they're like, what? wait, how? You know, and then they start to think. Mm. And that's what we have to get people that are start to start to seen as good. You know? So just doing things like that, and like you said, Emilio, it doesn't have to be just with cards. It could be with anything, you know, like just being like, okay, uh, this is a trick. You know, I practice this trick all the time, even though you really didn't, <laughs> you know, mm. just say it to them so they can believe that, you know, it's, it's, it's possible because you do it all the time. You're like, okay, well, think of a person right now and let's see if they text you in the next hour or something like that. But think of that person hard and then if they believe that it's possible and you get a group of people that believe it's possible, you're going to send out a signal to that person that they're trying to have them call you. You're going to send out a signal so strong that they're going to be like, okay, I, I, I feel like calling in so-and-so and yeah. then they'll call the phone. Well, and funny you mentioned that. that. Funny you mention that. Um, a little while ago, I was going through a little, a little phase. Or I shouldn't even really call it a little phase, but it was a point where I started recognizing um, my senses grabbing onto. As soon as someone thought, as soon as someone like randomly popped into my mind. A few seconds later, they'd, they'd call, right? Like, similar happens to you as well. And most people around the world are like, oh, how we have us up. But yeah. when I started actually recognizing that thought pattern where if I was thinking something and then, like, it had no connection whatsoever, it just popped in. Like, someone just popped into my mind. I recognized that that just popped in. And then I'm like, right, they're going to call. They're going to call me. I'm going to get a text. And then, bang. Like, it happened... It's happened quite a few times now since I've become aware of that. Um, how can I explain it? That them coming, like the thought coming from nowhere, and I was aware that that came from nowhere. So I attached it to the possibility that they're going to call or they're going to message. And when they did on the second, or after two seconds, it blew me away. And I kept practicing and practicing. And it's pretty, it's it's pretty amazing. It's actually getting in touch with. The, the senses and the abilities that we do have because if you go to the zero point and, and the ether and if it's all connected and that's how we interlink with um, telekine telekinesis, telepathy and that sort of thing, it's um it's a real thing. Yeah, real, definitely a real thing. The, the, the thing that I want a lot of people to practice, well, do, do, do it when you're when, when no one's around because then people are going to think that you know, you're, you're really nuts or something. But... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but what I've been practicing, and the reason why I say do it, do it when no one's around, because when you start doing it, you're gonna laugh at yourself because it's kind of funny. But this is when I do it when I'm in the woods or something. I actually try to direct wind where I want it to, and like I'll go out in the woods or something, or even when I'm at my house, like I'll go for a walk because we have a trail uh, with the railroad tracks. It's a really long trail, and no one goes back there. And I stand up. 
and I just move my arms like uh, like I'm playing with energy, and I try to direct the wind where I want it to go. And it's like mo- most of the time when I'm doing it, I'll get I'll, I'll try to direct the wind like to the left of me, and like I push my arms to the left of me really slowly, and I'll actually feel what it feels like. Uh, I'll imagine what it feels like to be wind, like be like, to be it, you know, and yeah. like. I put on my head, what is it like? What does it feel like to actually be wind? And then when I get to that state of mind, what, 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 the, when I get to that state of mind, how is it like to be wind? Then I actually connect with the wind, and I manifest to move where I want it to. And it, it looks funny because you're sitting there, and you're like going really slow. You, you look like uh, one of those Chinese guys that are like <laughs> moving their chi around while they're practicing their chi. So, so, so if you do this in public, people are probably going to ball in a circle and look at you, you know? Yeah, do it which could be a good thing as well. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it could be. The, the, you'll be like, okay, everybody watch. I'm going to manifest the wind. <laughs> you oh, know, and people yeah. are going to look at you like, oh, my God. But the, it's, it, it, it's really tough when you are doing stuff like that. Yeah, well, I'm, gonna, I'm going to the first tomorrow morning, actually, to look for some uh, gold tops, if you know what they are. Do you know gold tops? Uh no I, I'm not sure the little happy mushroom the psilocybin <laughs> <laughs> yeah going okay. to the forest tomorrow so I'm gonna to, I'm gonna give that a crack that forest where I go the energy is unbelievable like like compared to doing errand at work or at home or whatever when you go when you go in nature it's and it's specifically this place the energy is just you go into a good mood straight away and everything's just unreal and and that's not having any ethnogens or any at ex um I oh, lost word there. But yeah. What, what, yeah, when, when, when you're by yourself, too, Emilio, you you find that it's a lot easier to manifest whatever you're trying to do because when you have people by you, it's a lot harder because you have their attention and you, yeah. you, you when you're in that state of consciousness when when you're in that one zone. I don't know how to explain it. It's just that zone, like you're in that one, your, your space, your own space, you know, spaceless. And well, when in that state, you could feel everybody around you, and you could feel feel like if they're their tension, like on top of you. It's it, it, it's a really weird feeling. Uh, it's I re, I really don't know how to explain it really, but when, when you're trying to manifest or make the wind go in a certain way that you want it to. Better off doing it alone because you're able to co-create with yourself and not have any pressure, like uh, by, by your friends or you know, and anybody that's with you. you. You don't have that extra pressure on you of you know. All right, well, like I told them I was gonna do this and it's not happening for me, and then you start to get frustrated because it's not happening because they're around, yeah, because they're influenced in it because they're saying, okay, well, this is this is impossible, and then they don't realize that they're influenced influencing your reality that you're trying to create. Yeah, yeah, totally agree. Oh, well, another thing, I'll go, um, the listener, Fante, I think that's how you pronounce it, um, speaking of pines, um, they said, I made a crystal grid today in nature, in nature park of tall pines by a river. And when we were talking about the the grass thing, we were explaining, and she said here, I mean, I just scrolled out of my view, said that he hear tones while I sat there. So it's pretty interesting with what you put on your Facebook as well, what they were describing in the chat. Thanks for putting that in there also. Sorry to get to you straight away, but yeah, that's, just, that's unreal what you were speaking about before. I just have to check that out with that lady in the vibrating grass. It's, I'm going to have to be more aware of that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's basically anything. Like, it, it's really... It's like, all right, for, for instance, like we we need to realize that we're we're dreaming now. What what we call real life is just the dream world. Like we we have yeah. it all mixed up. It's like like all switched <laughs> around. We're dreaming. We're actually living. We're actually in reality. When we're dreaming, we're in reality because why we're in reality? Because we're actually in our conscious. We're in our authentic self. We're inside us. That's where we co-create. That's where we begin, you know? Well, you know what the amazing thing is? Amy, now. You go, sorry. What? No, no, you go. No, but, oh, uh, we're, 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 we're dreaming now because re- reality isn't really real. Because you understand when you die, death is just an illusion. Your body yeah. dies. You don't die. 
So yeah. what happens when you die? Okay, first thing that happens when you die is there there's a chemical released in your brain that's called DMT, which takes you to the dream world. I was just you know, actually if, about to uh, start talking about um, DMT when you mentioned that. Actually, that that that's the most very very profound um, substance and experience was that it rolls out for you. Oh my gosh! When I've had a few um, experiences that so far, not ayahuasca, the the drink that I'm eventually wanting to go do in the ceremony with the proper shaman but that it totally totally strips your whole understanding of what life and death is all about when you have specific experiences unreal the most beautiful experience I've ever had um but yeah, because that, 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 that's exactly what real life is about because you, yeah. know, you understand that life is just it, 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 there's time on life so like you 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 die when you're I don't know like when you're you're born and then die when you're ninety. But when you die, that chemical release in your brain, which is called DMT, yeah. okay. And when that's released, you go back into the dream state. Mm-hmm. In the dream state, what you've been dreaming your whole life, you have dreams. <laughs> that is reality. That is the true reality. This life that we call now is reality. It's not reality. This is just a dream. When you dream, that's reality. Well, you know, when you die. You that's the whole. That's the whole adventure of it all. That's I sort of explain to people when they're sort of getting. And I went through the same stage as well. Like, you know, you get. Well, I did. I got real negative about finding about all the conspiracies and all the bad things that are going on and, and that sort of stuff. But it's all. It's everything's all clarity. It's all essential. You know what I mean? It sort of brings us to the point in our journey where we are now. And it's that's. It's part of the adventure, finding everything out and and come to the understanding that not everything is exactly what we think it is, even when we're just speaking about um, life and death and our understandings of that. It's, it's tr- it really, really is truly an adventure, depending how you look at it. It always comes back to your own perception, because that's what, that's what that's your reality, your perception. Exactly. Um, no, exactly what you mean. Um, was this good? So, so look at my final song. Um, but yes, what I was going to, because we have three minutes left. Um, if anyone, what are you going to say? Hello, Darius. Okay, I think we've lost him. I'm not sure. So he's up. Oh no! Hang on, everyone. Hang on. Well, I'm not sure if you can still hear me. If it drops out, I'll call back. We have two minutes fifty-five left. Um, if anyone has any questions, oh no, what is going on? If anyone has any, Ooh, are we still on? Are we still on? Call dropped. Hang on a second. Hang on, everyone. Let me just quickly add the diaries back to the call. Wow. What is going on? Hang on a second. Yeah, if anyone has any any ideas or any questions or anything like that, um, feel free to Facebook me on, or my Facebook name is Living Man, one word, with a soul, the second word, on any ideas, because this radio show is um, more about everybody, so it's not just myself and Darius speaking about what we're understanding in our journey at the moment, we're still young, Darius is 18, I'm 25, we're still constantly learning, whether you're 18, 5 or 19 years old so everyone's input would be great because that's the whole purpose of right now everyone has to connect it everyone's got a network and so it'd be good to relay up other people as well so if you have anything you'd like to suggest um feel free to type in the chat or uh message me on facebook and i'll say the name again is living man one word with a soul second word so feel free to message and chat and any ideas that would be great. But Darius, are you there with us? 
Yeah, yeah, I, I'm here. And, okay. uh, we got one me? minute left. Yeah, we got one minute left. So is there anything? Okay. Yeah, the, 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 if anybody wants to contact me, either uh, I'm on uh, Facebook with, with uh, Emilio, or you could just contact me at Darius dot right at AOL dot com. That's my email address. It's a D A R I U S dot W R I G H T at AOL dot com. But that's all I got to say. Hi. Uh, Thank you. Um, thanks for everybody you tuned in today. Feel free to post your comments on how you thought the show went. And no, so apologies for the technical difficulties of it disconnecting and whatnot. We're going to have to get onto that and make sure that it doesn't happen for future because it's, it's not helpful at all. But thank you again. Feel free to message us. And next week, tune in. A very interesting show with a friend of mine, Bob, who said some intense experiences leaving the planet but we will talk to you soon and thank you very much everyone okay see you guys